The first and foremost is cardiac compression and arterial ventricular dimension caused by the octopus and the starfish suction apparatus. Right ventricular compression which is very important during obtuse marginal grafting. Mechanical stabilization and target area immobilization which can alter your left ventricular systolic and diastolic function. Your cardiac manipulation and impact diastolic function all can cause hemodynamic instability. Let us look at each causes for hemodynamic instability. Coming to cardiac compression, it leads to hypotension which might aggravate the already ischemic myocardium and this ischemia can lead to an ischemic mitral regurgitation and this regurgitation can aggravate the dysfunction. Again, this dysfunction can cause hypotension and there is already coronary occlusion which might aggravate your ischemia. So, this forms a vicious cycle. Hypotension, ischemia, mitral regurgitation, dysfunction, hypotension all form a cycle. Coming to the pathophysiology, normally pancreas secretes insulin and this insulin goes and acts on the insulin receptor and thereby the glucose which is outside is transported inside the cell for utilization. This is the normal glucose metabolism which happens with secretion of insulin. Let us see what happened with type 1 diabetes mellitus. In type 1, the pancreas which was supposed to secrete the insulin does not produce the insulin. The insulin is not produced from the pancreas. So, there won't be any action on the insulin receptor and the glucose cannot be transported into the cell for utilization. Therefore, hyperglycemia occurs. This is type 1 diabetes mellitus. Coming to type 2, here the pancreas produces the insulin. Coming to the components of the blood, normally blood forms about 8% of the total body weight. Of this 8%, plasma constitutes around 55% and your RBC constitutes around 45%. The other cells like your uh, WBC and platelet forms hardly less than 1%. Of this 55% of plasma, 91% is only water, 7% is protein and the solute is around 2%. Coming to the cell component, your platelet is around 150,000 or 400,000 per micro liter or the leukocyte which is between 4 to 10,000 per micro liter or your RBC which is around 4 to 6 millions per micro liter. This airway is innervated by lot of sensory afferent nerves which goes to nucleus tractus solitarius. Now you have to interrupt this tract to prevent the bronchoconstriction, how we can do it. For example, infiltration of local which prevents the nerve conduction or you give a regional blocks around the airway can prevent this reflex bronchoconstriction. The other important thing which can cause bronchospasm is parasympathetic. Here, the parasympathetic preganglion nephril travels via vagus nerve to release acetylcholine to the muscarinic receptor. So, you have to give something to counter this parasympathetic stimulation. What we can give? Here, you give anticholinergic mainly to overcome this reflex song. Not only that, you have volatile agents and beta 2 agonists also breaks this parasympathetic heart. So, when you give RBC, Healthy patient has no comorbid, average might have 1 or 2 comorbid, poor will have 3 to 4 comorbid. So, in case the patient is healthy, if you lose about 30% of blood volume, you can go for an RBC transfusion. 
in average patient if the blood volume is 20 percent loss you go for a transfusion and in a poor comorbid lot of comorbid is there in those cases even 10 percent volume loss is there you have to go for a rbc transfusion with regard to hemoglobin you go with less than 7 to 8 gram per deciliter in healthy individual in average that means the patient is having 2 to 3 comorbid you transfuse when you have 8 to 9 hemoglobin in a poor moribund patient you go with less than 10 gram per deciliter with regard to hematocrit in healthy individual if it is between 21 to 24 you go for transfusion in average patient if it is between 24 to 27 you go for transfusion in poor patient if it is less than 30 percent you go for transfusion